So welcome everybody. We are here today at Executive Director's Chat. We call that ED Chat here. And this is a chat, it's a conversation between all of us here. So uh, feel free to um, either chat with each other in the chat room or you can use the raise your hand option to chat with each other. But today we're gonna be exploring the use of artificial intelligence in grant writing. And I know if you're a nonprofit in here, you need a grant writer or you may be the grant writer. So what I wanna do is do a little poll as people are coming in and find out um, if you're the person who writes the grants for your organization, let's see who, who are the grant writers here. Are you the person who writes a grant for your organization? Ah, wow. Lots of people, it's most of you. Okay. This is, um, I knew this was gonna be most of you. Okay, yep. I'm gonna share the results and that really is most of you. So you may be wearing multiple hats, being the grant writer, being the executive director, being the volunteer coordinator, you may be multiple things. Well, we always talk about technology here at TechSoup and I know you guys are probably hearing about AI. You may be afraid of AI, I don't know. I know when I heard about it, I just kind of, uh, not sure. But then a friend told me that she wrote her whole book using AI, I'm like really? So I started asking questions that I needed answers to and um, pretty fascinating. So I do some grant writing courses and we, we use AI to write some grants. So I just wanted to kind of share this with you and then also hear your experience. So today is gonna be interactive. I want to show you how you can engage while you're here. Um, everybody is on mute. As you come in, you're on mute. I would love if you would remain on mute. If you have a question, use the raise your hand option down there at the bottom of your screen, you'll see the reactions button, or you can type it in the q and I would love to hear you come live to share your experience. So make sure you share your experience with us. My name is Aretha Simons. I'm the webinar producer here, and I want to get right into it. Um, it's going to be kind of like, um, you know, I'm going to share my screen and show you some things that I have um, learn from using artificial intelligence. And by the way, I cannot assume that everyone knows what I'm talking about or that everyone has used um, AI. So I wanna know who currently uses ChatGPT. So let me just ask this question. I'm gonna put it in the poll right here. One second. So the poll is not launching. So do me a favor, just type in yes or no. Yes, I currently use ChatGPT. No, I currently do not. I'm very curious to see how many people we have here that uses ChatGPT already. So, wow, almost even, almost even lots, lots of no's here. And some people say a little, yeah. Yes, for other reasons. Oh, I'm a pro, I love it, TJ. So TJ, I definitely want you to share with us as we get started. So hi, Jean, how are you? I see a lot of faces that I recognize. Awesome, great, great to see you all. So what I wanna do is, is share my main screen for, for a quick second because this is for, and I'm sharing this because for people who do not um, use ChatGPT or who have never used ChatGPT, and there are other types of, um, oh good, I'm reading this in the chat. Uh, no, with a letter published last week, from 350 to the world's top AI scientist says, stop using it until there's a place for more rules and regulations. We're gonna talk about that because what they're doing, and I, here, I'm gonna share my screen real quick. I'm gonna move, I have multiple screens here. One second. All right, can you see my screen? It's, it's a yellow screen, right? Somebody wave at me. Awesome, okay, so this is where you would log in and it's gonna say that it's openai.com backslash chat GPT. And so you would click here to log in for anyone who has not done that. This is what it looks like. But they've changed this site since I've started using it. They've changed it several times. So it may look different tomorrow, I don't know. But just, just know that the website is openai.com backslash chat GPT. So when you log in, and what it's gonna look like, it's gonna ask you for your email, it's gonna verify it's you. And when you get to this page, this is what I wanna talk about because we are using a platform that's new to us, but AI, artificial intelligence has been around for a long, long time, um, more than 30 years, maybe not in this form because we, we just start using computers in our home not too long ago. But here you can have ChatGPT, 
You can create realistic images and art forms. Incredible. Um, you can integrate uh, open AI models into your application for business. So you can even build apps for this. But we're going to do chat GPT, which is interact with our flagship language model in a conversation interface. And I see somebody's um, unmuted. So if you make sure that you are muted, that would be helpful because I'm trying to multitask here. So here, when you get to this page, this is what we do. You ever get something, um, a new phone or something, and you just open a box and just start playing with it, or you forget to read the instructions. So this are, these are the instructions right here. I don't know if you can see it. Do I need to make my screen bigger? Give me a thumbs up. Okay, make it bigger. Okay, so let me let me multiply this screen. Okay, here it says, this is a free research preview. So I'm using the free version here. There are paid versions. It says, our goal is to get external feedback in order to improve our systems and make them safer. So they're getting feedback from you as well. Here is a little red light. There's a little warning sign. While we have safeguards in place, the system may occasionally generate incorrect or misleading information and produce offensive and biased content. It is not intended to give advice. I know we're here to get advice, but I'm telling you, it's it's telling you, hey, there's our disclaimer. Uh, we may give you wrong information. I've seen where a lawyer is now being sued because he used ChatGPT to do his legal brief. So there's people who are using it for different things. And if you've seen, you've been on our other webinars and seen other webinars about artificial intelligence, it tells you there is a warning that says, hey, um, we're gonna give you good information, but don't rely on this. Don't use it for medical um, reasons. Don't use it for legal reasons. So here's the next warning, how we collect data. Yes, they are collecting your data. Conversations may re be reviewed by our AI trainers to improve our systems. So every question that's typed on here, they're probably keeping the questions, right? It makes sense. Here's a little lock and key. This is very good. Please do not share any sensitive oh, information in your conversations. Very important. Um, this huh? is no, I'm not on there. Okay, um, Darren, I'm gonna mute you. There we go. Um, this is uh, could be about your volunteers. If you want to write a letter about somebody, I um, mean, you all deal with all types of uh, different nonprofits, sensitive data, some domestic violence, um, all kinds of health organizations. So. Just make sure that you're not putting sensitive information into your chat GPT. Sounds like common sense, but I promise you, you know, you could do it unknowingly. So here, it, once again, they want your feedback. The system is optimized for a dialogue. So you're talking to, you know, artificial intelligence. So let us know in particular, what was the response good or helpful? They want to know or unhelpful. So they really want to know. So now I'm in here. And again, um, I've asked questions. I'm going to build a house. I asked about framing my house. What's the cost going to be? But if I want to ask um, questions, let's let's first of all remember I was talking about the directions. Let's look at these here. It's going to give you examples here. Explain quantum computing in simple terms. This is just an example. What you're going to what you can ask Chat Chat GPT. You can say, explain to me what a grant writer would put in a grant proposal. And it's gonna do that for you. Um, you can tell it to remember what you just said in an early conversation. Hey, remember what I asked you in an early conversation? Can you give me more details about um, funding for Orlando, Florida? So, and here's another kicker. May occasionally generate in incorrect information. So. If you are asking ChatGPT to give you demographics for your area, say you're helping children in the third grade in Orlando, Florida, make sure you verify that with the school board, you know, on their website, that's open information or, um, you know, the county that you're in, just make sure you verify a lot of the data. So I want to get right into it. I see there's a question in the um, chat. Okay, somebody was just saying that they have not used ChatGPT. I'm going to go to the the chat section, um, very good. So before I get into asking a question, does anybody wanna share? Because this is a conversation that anybody wanna share, um, you're gonna use the, the raise your hand option, how you use chat GPT. So 
Emily says, could you share a grant application to ChatGPT with the original call for applications to do a comparison to see if you missed elements? Ooh, that is a good one. And that, that's a good question. Anybody got any, um, any comments on that? Because you know every grant application funder is asking for specific information, right? And so if you got a call for applications and you put that information on there and you, like you said, with the original call for applications to do a comparison, see if you're missing elements, that would be a good one. I wish you had the information so we could put it in here to compare because that's the biggest thing in grant writing, missing those little things, you know, missing that list, having that checklist checked off and missing those things. So that's a good one. Anybody got any answers to that? Has anybody done that? I, I can speak to my experience with that. Um, Perfect, thank you. Sorry, I'm a bit nervous speaking in front of so many people, so That's pardon okay. me. But um, like I find that um, I, I've done that where I gave it the RFP and I gave it the copy. And it was interesting because like it, it was able to pick up some things that maybe I hadn't thought about. Mm -hmm. um, and so, you know, it was nice to, to sort of have that extra perspective, I guess. Um, at the same time, I think that there is this sort of like caution, um, just because the AI is suggesting that you add something, it may not necessarily be appropriate for the RFP or appropriate for your strategy. You know, um, it seems like there's some, uh, you know, your team might have thinking that goes behind the proposal and the AI is kind of blind to that. So that's something to think about. And um, I've also experienced just to that end, kind of like having uh, having done like uh, having asset for rewrites or things that incorporate its feedback to see maybe how it would implement those things. And I find that the answers that it give me, that it's given me are kind of uh, hollow, you know, kind of missing a human element. So mm -hmm. just just some experiences um, that I've had with that. But it, it does work. I just think that it takes uh, thinking. It's not automatic. Okay. Okay. That's very interesting. Um, because I, I wrote an email um, to a professional. I'm not going to say what type of professional it was. And I told ChatGPT to make it, you know, better than what I did. And, and what it wrote was like outstanding. So I, I imagine if you may have, if you may thought it was hollow, just say ChatGPT, rewrite this again and see what it, what it does. I don't know. So that was, that was great um, feedback. So um, Gavin and a couple other people asking about um, putting PDFs. I know in this free version, you have to copy the verbiage and then put it in here. Maybe in the paid version, which I do not use, um, you could probably add PDFs. Anybody got an experience? Hi, Gail. Welcome. An experience with PDFs and making graphics? So Susan asked a great question. Um, and you guys just use the raise your hand option. I'm going to stop sharing my screen for a moment because uh, I cannot see your hands being raised. Susan asked, um, where, where's her question? How much time do you lose by to fact check it versus how much time you save saving it? Very good question. Um, I imagine the fact checking, it, it, it just depends. Like I mentioned about the demographics. I mean, it, it may not take you that long to check that. Um, Crystal Jones, I see your hand raised. Go ahead and unmute yourself. Hi. Hi. At high. So I've been using it for a lot of things, um, but um, something that Cameron touched on, um, and I think several of us in the chat have touched on, um, be careful of the facts, especially when it starts naming people, because I've had this thing, in fact, just yesterday, make up a whole person that did not exist at all. Um, but I've used it in a variety of ways, and it's not perfect technology, but like you, Aretha, I've used it to write letters. I've used it to write emails. I've used it, I saw someone else say it about social media. I spent the whole weekend using it to write my whole month worth of social media posts um, and refine them and get me information. But you do have to fact check, especially when it calls out people and statistics. Double check those really quick. What I find the fastest way to do that, highlight them, put that stat in a Google search, and either it's gonna come back with what the hell are you talking about or it's gonna come back and confirm um, it. So it's not it's not perfect, but I've used it for a lot of things. In terms of grant writing, I just started trying to play with this for grant writing because it had worked so well for letters and social media and all kinds of things. Um, what I did was I um, fed it a bunch of information, fed it our website, 
um, you know, and just kind of had a conversation with AI first. And then I started feeding it some of the questions from the grant application, but not feeding them cold, like, you know, how would you apply this to Ash Arts and STEM, you know, um, and have it take the information I just fed it and feed me back answers. And I've had good results. Some of it has been less than human. And when it does, I'll just tell it, hey, this is great. Can you rewrite that? Mm -hmm. um, so basically, I treat it like I'm having a conversation with a robot I'm trying to train, a really smart robot, but it doesn't know everything. So I treat it like a, um, a four-year-old robot. <laughs> so it's it's got the mind of a genius, but you know sometimes the, um, the capabilities of a four-year-old in some areas. So if you approach it that way, um, it really is a pretty powerful tool, but it's not the end all be all, but it sure has made so far this grant um, application so much easier for me. Yeah, thank you for that feedback. Um, Dr. Ron, hi. Hi, um, you know, you need to treat it like any employee who would be reporting to you, right? Would you would you quote any employee working for you and, and assume that they've got every everything correct? Uh, I've been using it, um, well, First, the more context you give it, the better it, it, it reacts. Uh, and I've been using it to generate multiple choice quizzes. Uh, I put a link again at uh, 1.14 p.m. to our website. We've got uh, chat GPT-4 in the uh, chat bot, uh, but we've also used it to generate multiple choice quizzes and answers. Now, I'm a, a paraplegic, so it's still very tedious for me to copy and paste each thing. So I've started, I haven't finished yet, but I've started playing around with having chat GPT-4 write the PHP or the JavaScript code for, for me to do a plugin for WordPress that takes the output of, uh, it's like one long paragraph of the questions and answers, and then we'll parse that into the XML file that then I can import into WordPress. So I won't have to, won't have to do all the tedious copy uh, and and paste, but it's you know it does in a couple of seconds what would take me a couple of days. Yeah, nice, nice. Give me one second, um, MCGS. I'm going to answer Billy's question. Um, how do you give Chat GPT rules or other stuff? I, I see a lot of questions in the chat area, so if you can put them now in the Q and A because we get we have a lot of people on the section. So Billy, you you give it rules just like you your question. You would give it rules. You can tell ChatGPT, you are a doctor. Write me a, you know, a, a medical letter saying that my child cannot go to school or something like that. I don't know, but you have you can tell ChatGPT. That was a bad example. So <laughs> you can tell ChatGPT, uh, you know, what you are. You're you're an architect. You know, tell me how much it's going to cost to build a duplex. You can tell it. You can give it the rules. So uh, thank you for that question. Okay, M. MGS. MCGS. I couldn't change my name. I'm Linda Morgan Clark. <laughs> that's, the, that's an acronym for the Genealogy Society I was just on a Zoom call with. Oh, wow. But, but uh, I'm with uh, two nonprofits, the Genealogy Society as well as the, the Community Food Pantry. And the thing that as far as the food pantry is concerned, which I do write grants for, fundraising letters, thank you letters, um, I am working in my mind what to do with uh, some reporting that I've got coming up on a couple of grants. Uh, the thing that I have learned, however, from the genealogy community and using artificial intelligence and particularly chat GPT is to remember that it's about words and not facts. So it is helping you write good script. And I always ask it for two or three versions of everything that I ask it to do. And then sometimes I can tweak a couple of, or merge a couple of them or whatever and, and make them more human sounding. But uh, it is, it's about words and not facts. Now, I use Bing AI uh, for facts because it does do a better job of getting you some good links to check out and verify. Um, so, it has to do, you need to learn what ChatGPT does, what Bing does, uh, where it gets its information and that kind of thing. So 
that's what I have done is I've really delved into where it gets, where the, each one of these gets its information. That helps me understand what it's trying to do. That was great. That was great information. And what I want you guys to do, you know, this is ED chat. We chat with each other. Go on in, in the chat room and answer some of these questions for some of your colleagues because we got a lot of questions here. Um, go ahead, user Kelly, go ahead and I'll unmute yourself and then I'll get to the Q&A for a second. Sure. Um, what I have done in a lot of cases is uh, I will put in something that I have written and then ask it, you know, hey, identify my main points or find gaps in my writing. What are what are points that I need to develop more? And that way I make sure that it retains my voice um, because I do want to make sure that, you know, I'm still being authentic to myself and, and to our brand. Um, but that way it's strengthening my writing and not just uh, replacing it necessarily. That was good. If you guys don't walk away with anything, <laughs> those two comments were very good. Thank you, Kelly. I appreciate that. Hi, Coral. Go ahead and unmute yourself. Hi everyone. Um, one of the things I have found to make it easier on us is to not delete all com all conversations, because as you write more and into it, it will pull out from the information that you have already provided. And in terms of facts and data and statistics for grant writing, we're supposed to already have that before we sit down to write it. So for instance, I would say, um, please describe how the funds will help us in XYZ, utilizing the data that it will help this many people in this amount of time because of whatever statistics I have, and it will pull it in. Once I have it, I can then insert the sources myself. Another way that I'm using it as well is uh, for the domestic violence advocates, they do social media posts and sometimes they say, well, I want to say this with this post. And I would write, uh, write a social media post, an engaging social media post, include emojis that in includes this information. Like for instance, we had one where it was related to swim safety tips for kids. And I had all of the uh, list that I had received from the advocate and it gave my points and expanded on them. It had the emojis in there and then it also linked back to our site. Very nice. So it's just a way of, if you delete the information, it stops knowing about what you are doing. Mm -hmm. And the more, the more that you are using the specific terms, if you're writing donations, asking for donations for a specific event, it will pull everything that you already told them about the event. And then sometimes they add something that you like, oh, I didn't think about that idea. I like that idea, but let me not add it just now until I can develop it better. Um, and that's how we've been using it. And it's, it's helping us increase our social media press and it helps us with the communication with donate uh, donors, supporters, and our newsletter as well. Awesome. Thanks for sharing that. And I want to mention something. Um, she said something really, really key about erasing. I've gone back to check GPT a couple of times and what I asked it was gone. So what I want to recommend to you all is when you get an answer that you like, or even if you don't like, maybe it had a power sentence in there or a power word that you never heard of, copy and paste the answer that ChatGPT gave you in another Word document so you could have it because it could change. I mean, they could shut down tomorrow. So you just never know. So I would get in the habit of saving everything. So what I'm gonna do is go to the Q&A for one second. Daniel, I see your hand. Claudia, Nan, and Ash, I see your hand raised. Give me one minute. I'm gonna go to the Q&A and then I'll come back to you guys. So um, Randall said, is it possible two people both using chat GPT for the same grant application could come up with identical grant proposals. Ooh, that's a good one. And I would, I would love to find out. So if we could test this before the end of the webinar. So um, somebody put a question in the, in the, in the Q and A for me that a grant funder would ask. And then Randall, if you, do you have chat GPT open? You can unmute yourself. If you have the question and I have the question, I will put it in and let's see if it gives both of us the same answer. So if you put the question in Q&A, say this is for Randall and Aretha and just ask us a question, 
Randall and I will both put it in Q and A and see if we come if Chat GPT come up with the same answer. So, um, Henry, I'm not sure what your question. You said how about ethically? I'm not sure um, what you mean by that. If you want to raise, do your raise your hand options. Um, and I appreciate um, Jean going in here and answering some questions in here. And you guys feel free. This is our conversation. This is just. Um, you guys can go in the chat room and answer questions. Have you compared chat GPT versus Bing versus BAR for grant application? Has that been anybody in here? Have you compared those? Just put it in the chat area. So I'm gonna go to Daniel real quick. Daniel, you can unmute yourself, please. Ah, okay, hello. Um, I just wanna uh, reiterate what MCGS, I for, sorry, sorry, I forgot what, your, uh, what it stands for, but uh, it breaks out into, but um, if you want to find information do not use chat uh, chat gpt i will recommend using bart uh, being you know anything that will give you a reference first of all and or or use the or use the plugin if you have the plus version and second going back to somebody asking uh, chat gpt to fact check or the things that you wrote uh, written you have written whether if you have missed anything i would always always ask chat gpt Say if you say okay, um, did I mention some? Uh, <clears throat> did you mention uh, say the the stats, specific stat? Always ask Chat uh, GPT to fact check itself. It's a learning uh, uh, a chat bot, so it's really good at learning from its own mistakes. So always ask it and ask it to reference the direct, the exact paragraphs that perhaps that that you're looking for, so that you you can. Um, so that's so you, you so you know for sure. Yeah. That's that's all I have to add. Awesome. Thank you. And for those of you who are just joining us, this is being recorded. We're going to send the video replay probably later today or early in the morning. Because uh, I know there were questions that were asked that were already answered. So you'll be able to hear those as well. Um, Claudia, you can go ahead and unmute yourself. Hi, thank Hi. you. Um, I'm Claudia from Latin Advocacy Network. So we provide immigration legal services. And for us, it was like kind of very difficult to start because we were very sensitive with the information. And um, it's very, very important that we uh, learn to try, to try uh, ChatGPT as a tool. And just keep in mind that it's just a tool, just like Google, just like whatever you have to just check information. For us, it was very, very useful for, as people said, to um, write better emails, better letters. But also, I started, for example, to look for very specific grants, like which is the best grant in California, in this area, um, for paying uh, office space, like something like that. And I got like really good results, and like all the information was very useful. I also use it for uh, the agenda for meetings. Um, and also if I have a plan, like a project, I uh, also use it to have like a, uh, a map of how to, how to um, develop my project. It gives me a lot of ideas um, yes. about it. Um, and let me check what else. Something that I found is like when I ask um, a statistics one, like numbers, mm -hmm. um, I got the information, which sounds very interesting, but then when I ask like, um, which is your source, and it just it just referred me to these big nonprofits and this report that has like 300 pages. So I I was thinking, yeah, there is no way I will use that because I, I don't have the time to read all of these 300 pages and I'm not sure. So you have the feeling when it's something that it's not really something that you would use. And yeah, I would just say, keep in mind, it's just a tool. Do not share um, sensitive information. I never ever put names of people or, or um, I don't know, like something like more specific about the organization. I try not, you know, just not share that. Um, and I think that's it. <laughs> awesome, thank you so much. Aretha, yeah, I think you, you muted yourself. Yeah, Nan, go ahead, Nan. Oh, okay, so I'm not real. I don't really use the chat box, but just now and then. Um, it wasn't for a grant, but it was for just a social media re a post. And um, I'm suicide prevention and drug overdose. 
And I have this event that I'm taking out military and their families over the weekend. And so what we are doing is um, giving away free Narcan and free gun locks. So um, we're paddle for suicide prevention. So that's the other thing. We take out group therapy on the water with a paddleboard that holds seven people. But get, going to what my post was, here we're, I'm offering to give away the free gun locks and the, the chat end up re, re, um, like coming up with an analogy of what I wanted to say, but it also like wanted them to surrender their guns. And I was like, well, I was really kind of taken back by that because it literally went down that path. And I'm like, well, I'm giving them free gun locks. I'm not asking their, them to surrender their, their guns. So I kind of worried about that because I have heard that behind it, when people are looking at you, whoever's running all the chat box, they can be, you got to be careful if they're politically driven. And so that was kind of like a red flag. And I was just, and I reworded it because I'm like, well, that's certainly not what I'm asking here. And then once I reworded the question, like you said, you know, it gave me something that I would post and that we were actually doing, but it did kind of scare me why that went in that direction. And then someone else that I know, um, she trains animals. She's part of the family. She's the daughter of the Barnum and Bailey's um, circus, the Ringley circus here in Florida. And she, they, she wrote something in the chat box and it was something with animal training, but then all of a sudden these animal rights activists like type of answer came through. And she was kind of like a heads up for her a little bit too. So I think we do have to worry about who is actually monitoring and who's on the other side, because if it is politically driven, that's the last thing that we want to see. Wow, this is so, so good. Thank you so much for that. And yeah. this is why I wanted to do this executive director's chat so we can see each other's face, hear each other's voice, hear our experiences, share your, your wins, your those points that you just made, Nan, about paying attention to those kind of things. That's very interesting. Yeah. Thank you yeah. for sharing that. Yeah. Ash, Ash Arts, um, go ahead and unmute yourself. Hi there. It's actually Crystal again. I had to log in from my personal computer. I was on my work computer before. Okay. okay. Um, I just wanted to say that one of the other things that I have done is, you know, because I'm seeing in the chat, you know, BARD versus chat GPT versus other tools. And to be honest, I think a lot of these are using some of the same engines and AIs underneath. So don't assume that because it's got a different window dressing, it's a different tool. What I have been doing is using both chat GPT side by side to BARD. And I, I truly believe that BARD is um, using chat GPT's engine or some of it um, because some of the information is coming back is the same, but don't be afraid to correct the AI. Um, I've had it make up whole people and I just went right back into the chat and said, there's no such person as this person. And it's come back right away and said, oh yeah, you're right. Sorry, I'm just a chat bots and I'm just learning. I mean, literally it's done that. Um, so you do have to fact check pretty much everything that it comes out with numbers in regards to people. But as you start doing these correcting and slapping it on its hand, it gets better. Um, and never delete any of your history because it uses that history. Someone else just pointed this out to remember and refine the data that it gives you. So it gets better as you, the more you use it, but try feeding it facts first before you start asking it questions. Yeah, that was so, so good. Thank you guys so much. I had I was on mute. I'm glad I was because I just laughed because I, I, I too have seen a chat GPT. So I don't know how people feel. I'm just a chat. I'm just artificial intelligence. So it does say funny things to me. It's not funny, but it, it was funny at the time, you know, so that was good. Thank you for sharing that. It is funny. It is funny. <laughs> I giggled. <laughs> yeah, yeah like I, I ain't really real. So don't believe nothing I'd say. But so I, I want to get back to using it for grant writing for you all who all of you need grants that's you know how you sustain yourself through and a grant doesn't always mean mean writing it could just mean you know conversation asking somebody for a donation it's a contribution but for you who are using it to ask for contributions again just keep in mind um put some put some facts in there if don't say tell me how to do a fundraiser it's going to give you anything you need to be specific you need to say I want to do a fundraiser. I want to do it at the, you know, Rosen Hotel, and it's going to see the thousand people. You got to, you have to give it data and, and feed it information. So, I, I really appreciate everybody's point. I'm going to go back to the Q and A section because there's some I know I did not answer. Um, uh, 
Jim Yu, I, I hope I'm saying your name right. It's J-A-I-I-U. Can we use ChatGPT to override the AI generated content? So ChatGPT is artificial intelligence. So I don't know when you say to override the AI generated content, you may wanna um, uh, come online and ask that. Um, uh, and, and this is your, somebody is requesting to record this locally. So um, sorry, we're gonna send the recording out. Go ahead, I see you, go ahead and unmute yourself. Jamu, is that how you say your name? I hope, I'm sorry if I'm messing it wrong. Go ahead and unmute yourself. You're still muted if you're speaking. Yes, yes, yes. Okay. Can you hear me now? I can, yeah, I can barely hear you, but we know you're there. No, can, can you hear me clearly? Yes, yes. Yeah, my name is Jamie. You get this correct. My name is Jamie Balogun from Free Cross Academy in Nigeria. Okay. Yeah, and the question I'm asking is like, uh, it's just a clarification about it is like, you know, a lot of organization, maybe let's say as a freelancer, you write a content of maybe a direct proposal to an organization, and a lot of people do not support your application being like a high. So the question is like, can a can start to use to get rid of that? Like so that the any other he high to cannot be the cannot detect the content written by just between. Okay, I got part of the question. Did anybody, your, your phone was breaking up, your, your sound was breaking up. So I'm not sure if anybody got most of his question. Um, maybe try to type it in the chat again. Sorry about that. So, All right, no, no problem, no problem. Okay, so um, someone asked about images to chat GPT, do images. Yes, um, at the beginning of it, I showed you where you could either have a conversation or you can click on the link that says, um, you know, create images. So it does create images for you all. So hopefully that helps. Anybody else have any questions or comments? I would love to do an example for you all. So um, earlier Randall asked a question, but no one put it in the chat. What question you wanted both of us to look at? Go ahead, Ash Arts, go ahead and unmute yourself. I was just gonna say one thing. Um, so I put it in the chat, but I'll say it here too. Um, so for organizations that um, deal with persons of color, like um, Ash Arts and STEM, um, some of the information, this has been talked about on, on social media and, and other places as well. Um, the, the chat AIs are still learning how to deal with um, um, people of color, terminology surrounding people of color. So yesterday I asked it to give me um, the names of um, BIPOC persons in um, arts and STEM who would overcome adversity in their um, career. And it gave me back a bunch of names um, and it started giving me pictures and it started giving me pictures because I started asking it to give me images. So it started giving me images every time it gave me names. Um, and three of the names were indeed people who'd overcome adversity in arts and STEM, but they weren't BIPOC people. Um, one of them was a made up name, Kim Wynn, um, with a picture to go with it that wasn't, it was a Kim Wynn, but she's not what they said she was. And the other two were actually real names that I'd never heard of. And so they were good people that I could use for my social media posts. Um, what I did though, is I went right back and I said, you know, and I named the three people, this is a Caucasian person, they are not BIPOC. This is a Caucasian person, they are not BIPOC. And it immediately apologized. And, you know, I know that it takes that information in, so it won't spit that information back out again. So you kind of have to correct it when it does it, but do be aware that um, not only does it make up people, it doesn't seem to understand terminology like persons of color, black, Caucasian, um, BIPOC. It just, you know, you have to kind of teach it those term terminology so it understands how to get back the information you need. Very good. Thank you so much. And so an, an anonymous, sure, I'll come back to you in a moment. An anonymous type. So what does this mean for us who make a living writing? I understand the excitement for all those who aren't writers, but we've spent years perfecting our skill set. And I'm going to tell you from experience, because I was a grant writer for HUD, United Way, um, City of Orlando, and I was also a grant reviewer. I think that this tool can help you save time, because if you're a grant writer, you know, doing the research is, it, it takes hours doing research. And you might have copies of your grants in different places or on your computer, but I'm telling you, this will speed up your process because 
I've already used it and it definitely made a difference. So I think use it to your advantage. I don't think it's going to, um, you're not going to lose your job. Um, I think it can only enhance. If you use it to enhance your skill, you don't have to use it at all. And don't think that, you know, um, people who have nonprofits are going to use ChatGPT to to write their grants for them. It's still a grant writing is still a skill set um, that you have to have. You have to know, you know, just a lot of I, I can go on and on about that. I'm gonna let Cheryl answer her, um, ask her question. Go ahead, Cheryl, you can unmute yourself. Oh, thanks for taking my question. Um, I just had because I couldn't access the QA. Um, my question was just about how at universities now um, in Canada, I'm not sure about in the States, but in Canada that we have a lot of uh, AI detection. So my question is, when it comes to using any type of chat AI or anything like that, any AI, what type of, well, I, my, I guess my concern is, are there any grant organizations now that have the type of AI that universities use to detect that you're not writing it 100% from your organization, if that makes sense? Well, I, what I want to say is, I don't think that ChatGPT can, can write for your organization 100% because mm -hmm. there's hundreds of you on here. And if you, if you all served the homeless, your grants would still be different because it's for your demographic, it's for your county, it's for your, your zip code. So there are things that are specific just to your organization. So don't think um, that it's gonna be like, oh, this is a copy of theirs because it can't be identical. You know, you may have a power of word or a power of sentence in there, but I don't think it's gonna be um, identical. That's just my opinion. Anybody else got any thoughts on that? Because it's happening also with uh, in HR, right, where people are using AI to write their um, their cover letters and also their resumes, and they're getting, of course, getting picked up by these by smart technology with companies. So my concern is really that if you use it, yes, you can tweak it to your own, but how smart is on the other side, or is their AI going to be to be able to say, okay, well, they didn't write most of this. And just kind of um, weed out applications that way. That's a question that um, we, we may ask some funders to come on and answer that because that's a great question. I want to see if are there any funders on here? I know a lot of times funders who are on our webinars who give out grants. Um, usually, Lisa's here. Is this my Lisa? I don't know if it's the same Lisa. Go ahead and unmute yourself. I don't think I don't think I'm the you're okay. Lisa. Okay. <laughs> okay. The, I'm I'm I can just um I have a couple of broad, I guess, philosophical questions that can follow on what Cheryl was just saying. Um I my question in the QA was, yeah, are is there a place we can go to actually read about um how funders are reacting to the AI generated proposals and you know what um I'm sure there's conversations about it, you know, going on behind closed doors. I just wondered uh, what, you know, what they were thinking. And I work for a nonprofit news organization where um, we specialize in uh, investigative news uh, for North Carolina. And I guess I'm concerned as Cheryl maybe alluded to that, um, that our readers may be skeptical. If, you know, if we're using AI to help journal, to help even our journalists, you know, gather data. So not necessarily writing stories, but you know, gathering the data and things that we've talked about so far in this webinar. But I'm worried about the perception. I guess I'm concerned about the perception coming from readers and funders and donors. And um, but I'll I'll stop there. It's more 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 philosophical questions. If anybody has run into that. I love that question though, and that's something. Um, when you close or when you leave this webinar, you're going to get a. Um, a survey, it'll take you a minute to fill it out. I would love for you guys to put on there that you want to hear from, from some funders um, that may be reviewing this or, so I would love to hear more about that. Um, Jen, is it Jean or Jen? Jean. Okay, go ahead. And, and I used to work for a funder. And at the time what we, really leaned into and was a small community foundation and we really leaned into understanding who that 
organization was. So if it sounds fake to the writer, it might sound fake to the um, the funder. So as, as a grant writer, make sure you're not, you know, just sounding really authentic about your organization. And that's kind of where we largely um, geared our granting towards. We weren't really super picky about punctuation and all that stuff because we knew a lot of the smaller nonprofits didn't necessarily have the ability to hire a professional grant writer. Now I can just see this as, as something being very beneficial because we did have a number of um um, English as second language organizations applying and they had trouble finding the words and we always constantly had to keep reminding our reviewers that we're not checking grammar we are going after what the cause is are they able to do the project they say they do and to meet the missions that we want to meet and that's what it boiled down to in the foundation um, world for right. us anyway smaller foundations so very good. Thank, Thank you. you for that. I appreciate that. So, um, jo Johan, I hope I'm pronouncing your name right. You put a question in the chat. You wanted me to put this in chat GPT. The question was, I'm not going to read the question because it's a math question, but I put it in chat GPT and chat GPT gave me an answer. I'm going to show it in a moment. But Gavin said, can you please do an example of how chat GPT will help with it in the aspect of writing a grant? So, um, your question is a little vague. I wish it's not, it was vague to me. It may not be vague to you. Uh, I wish you would come on and like ask me a question or um, put it, come, yeah, come live and ask me a specific question to ask chat GPT. But I can put that in the chat and see what it says. How can you help me with an aspect of grant writing? I can ask chat GPT that. But while I'm, while I'm um, waiting for you to come on and I see your hand, um, uh, Ash, just one second. I'm going to share. You see the um, answer about the math question you ask. So the question was, I have a circle with a diameter of three millimeters. Um, how do you calculate the length of the cord? So this is what it gave me. This is the answer that it gave me. I don't even know if that's right or not, but that's the answer that it gave me. Uh, for the time, for the sake of time, I'm not going to try to look it up. And plus, I. I did very bad in math. So Teresa, I don't think we're seeing, seeing your, your screen. screen. Oh, you're not. Are you no. seeing any screen at all? It was black. It's just dark. Oh, weird. I wonder if that's chat GB doing that. One second. Hold on one second. Oh, I'm trying to do that. Go ahead and ask and ask your question. Oh, I was going to say, I see a lot of people worried about or expressing concerns about um, AI, you know, um, being inauthentic, people using it, you know, to write their entire grant and, you know, um, using it for filling out job applications and all kinds of things. The truth of the matter is I've used a number of AI services. Um, and at the end of the day, it, it, it has to it has to work with the inputs you provide. So the data that it puts out is based on the data you put in. Um, if you're not giving it any information, you just take what it says, you know, on face value without, you know, vetting it, without refining it, then yes, you're going to get all those things that you're worried about are going to come out of AI. Um, it's a tool. It is not meant to be taken verbatim. Um, if it comes out, like I just typed in um, to Bard, you know, what is Ash Arts and STEM? Because I wanted to see what it came back with. And surprisingly, except for one small fact, it came back with the information I have been teaching it for the last two weeks about what's the response when people ask, what is Ash Arts and STEM? And it's exactly the answer I would want to give if I was giving the long form answer. So it's only as good as the input you provided. And you're not obligated to take what it pulls out and use it verbatim. And anyone who's doing that, you're gonna find you're gonna get less than desirable results anyway. If you're just gonna take and accept what it says and just copy and paste it wholesale without vetting it, without you know refining it, um, then yeah, you're gonna get some of these fake results that you know are meaningless. And even in the job search, because I am looking for a job right now, if it writes a cover letter, it's only writing a cover letter based on the information I've provided it about me. Um, and I have to vet that letter and say, does this ring true? Is this sounding like my voice? Is this something I would write? And I don't have to accept it wholesale. I can, um, I can refine it so it feels like my voice. Mm -hmm. 
Very good. Thanks for sharing that. And I want to say, um, I see a lot of comments in the um, chat. Somebody's like, we should stop right now before this all gets out of hand. I totally get it. I I, I was not with with um, ChatGBT until a friend, you know, showed me that she accomplished a lot. And so I was like, okay, let me just try it. And then I could not stop using it. It's it's just like the phone when we when we first got our phones in our homes. Um, I don't know if you remember, but we only had we had an upstairs downstairs. And we would have to run upstairs or downstairs to answer our phone. Now we carry our phones with us everywhere. We can't live without it. And so I think artificial intelligence is not going anywhere. And, you know, you know, get with the program. I don't know. It's not going, in. they've been using it, but I think they're allowing us to use it um, for whatever reason. I don't, I don't want to get into it. This is a conversation that we're having. This is not, um, TechSoup trying to convince you, we don't even have it on our platform to offer it to you. This is just a conversation for executive directors to talk about how you use it for your advantage. And I appreciate all the comments that you've shared and all the, the feedback that you've shared with each other. And so Coral, I wanna um, answer your question and then I'm gonna do one demo for um, the gentleman that asked for a demo. Go ahead, unmute yourself, Coral. Um, I just wanted to point out, uh, Dr. Ron posted, an example of how are funders reacting to grant proposals that use AI on the chat. And I posted the same question on my chat GPT and it completely gave me a different answer to what he received. And he broke it down in the way that I write in the way that I feed it the information. And it goes back to what you were saying. We cannot take it at hand. We have to go back through it we had to tell it this, we had to take the information and edit it as well, is the same as reading a news article. You read it and then you say, I wanna learn more. So you go to a different source to see what they're telling you about. So same questions to completely different answers because it's based on what I had fed it, what I wanted to see and what I wanted to sound like. I do a lot of, um, give me a tone of engagement, give me a tone of friendliness, give me a tone of positive um, attitude to try to get my my information across. And that's what it feeds to me and is similar to how I write in in real life without its uh, its assistance. So just wanted to say that for everyone. Thank you so much. I was trying to answer questions in the chat in the Q&A. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna try to share my screen for the last five minutes and see if um, we can get some questions answered and make sure that you guys can see my screen. One second, the right screen that is. Share. Can you see the screen that says chat GPT? Yes. Thank you, awesome. So, um, the other question, I'm not sure what answer you got. This was the math question. I may not have asked it right. I asked, it, it says, here's how you do it. Oh, so it didn't give me the answer. It told me how to do it. So we're gonna go ahead and pass that since we're talking about grant writing. Uh, I just wanted to entertain your question. But someone asked, how can ChatGPT help me um, write a grant? So I said, how can you help me write a grant? I'm gonna say this. You guys can um, type something in the chat if you want me to put, put it in here. And I want it says, I'm happy to assist you. <laughs> I always imagine what the voice would sound like. But as you can see, it just kind of gives you that. But then if you want to be uh, specific and I'm going to ask it something else, it's still talking. It's still going on and on and on. As you see these little dots right here going, so it's still writing. It's telling you the project um, plan, budget, this is something that the, some, somebody was asking about being a grant writer or how do they help with the grants? Something you can give to your, your people who want you to write a grant. So best of luck in grant writing. So I wanna say, um, I have a, um, I'm just gonna put this here and I probably spelled it wrong because I can't see my screen one second. Yeah, oh yeah, I did definitely spelled that wrong. And I'm gonna put a city, I'm gonna say, um,
I'll put a dollar sign in here. No, rehabbing. I'm not just, did I spell that right? Um, I'm making stuff up. So let's just see what it says. While you're doing that, I'm gonna check the chat. Ooh, somebody, um, okay. So basically he wrote a letter for me. You guys see it? I like this. And you don't have to use it word for word. So, you know, the grant writer saying, I wouldn't copy this and put it, I would make it my own. I would add some more things in here. Um, the primary objective, I like this. I love that. I love just that sentence right there. I love that. But if you want to add some more, why you're doing it, uh, here it is, a project impact. And back to the question, how's, how is it going to affect us? It did that in a minute. I could not think this fast. So you see, it has its advantages and I, I want you guys to use it for your event. Oh, it even talked about the project plan. I didn't even think about that because people wanna know when you're writing a grant, what are you gonna use their money for? What are you gonna use that investment for? And here's a breakdown. It doesn't have any, any um, breakdown of the numbers yet because I, I haven't scrolled down. Here's a button, boom, there it is. Sorry, it beat me to it. But there you go. I got it. What was the prompt again? Huh? What was your prompt? Give me one second and I'll go back to it. I'm just wanna just see, I think, yeah. Okay, so my prompt was, I'm scrolling up. I have a homeless shelter in Arcadia, Florida. Can you help me write a grant asking for $100,000 for rehabbing a home that was donated? So that was my prompt. So that was, that was the example. Oh, you guys, um, lots more questions in the Q&A, um, and we're, we're almost out of time. If, would you like to do this again? Put, a, put a, um, a yes or no in the chat, and we can be more specific in what this e chat would be about. Um, we could do it next month or the end of this month if you want, but put that on the survey that you fill out. So all yeses, all yeses, awesome. We, we can definitely do that. And then also, you know what you guys can do on your survey? If you want to have me ask the question on the, um, on the chat GPT, put that on the survey as well. So uh, can we do one coming up with good prompts for chat? Yeah, I like that, Kelly. Can you please put that on your survey? Or I'm gonna put my email in here, guys, even better yet, because I may give 200 surveys. I'm gonna put my email. And also if you guys, I don't really look like I like to talk, but I don't. So if you guys wanna come on and be the, you know, be the, um, what do I call it? Not the host, the, um, I don't know, the guest speaker, uh, please let me know. So there's my email. I wanna thank you all for your comments, powerful, impactful, um, enlightening. Can't see your, you can't see your email, please. Uh, you can't see my email. I put it in the chat, but it's a oh, right. Simons okay. at TechSoup. Okay, a Simons at TechSoup. Um, guys, thank you so much, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you so much um, for being here today. I want to give you back your two minutes of time. Um, I, I know the chat. It's a Zoom thing. I cannot save it. Um, if I were, we we use this on an open platform. What I'm going to do, I don't even know how to send this to you. We use SlideShare for our open platform for sharing because I can't send this to everybody because not everybody wants their information sent out to everybody on the chat. Um, so uh, if you want the chat, email me and I will email you the chat, please. And if they, um, my... On the bottom of the uh, chat screen where the three dots are, if you right click on that, it'll tell I you know. to stay chat. It does not, it does not, it does not work. work unless you're oh, the not, admin. Yeah. Oh, it does okay. Not, yeah. <laughs> it does not always work. So email, I'll put my email in there. A Simons at TechSoup. Please email me if you want the chat because there was a lot of good questions and comments in the chat. Again, thank you all for your time. Um, Ms. Jean, I hope you stayed on for the whole time. Thank you guys. Have a great day. Bye, everybody. Saving the chat thank worked you. for me. Thank you. Oh, good. Thanks for letting me know. So that worked for you. That's good.
Awesome. Bye, guys. Bye.